All right. Bonjour tout le monde et bienvenue. Welcome online and in person to Concordia University's fourth space. Thank you so much for joining us for this event, which allows us to peek into the course in development right now from students currently registered uh, for public art and sustainability here at Concordia. Concordia, excuse me, and will also be treated to a workshop led by Max Holzberg and Elliot Elliot, who will introduce their project a little bit later on after we do a walkthrough of the projects and development that the students are working on. First, I just wanted to let you know that we are streaming to YouTube live from Forest Space, which is located on unceded indigenous lands here in Jojage, Montreal, and we'd like to extend our gratitude to the Kanyankahaga Nation, who are the caretakers for the lands and waters we're meeting on for their teachings about the earth and our relations. If you're new to fourth space, I'll tell you what we do here. We work with our faculty community, students and staff as well to activate the ongoing research projects and initiatives with the goal of co-creating knowledge and building community across the university and beyond. And we do so by producing daily hybrid activities that are free and open to the public. It's been our great pleasure to collaborate with the props for this course, Juan, Kelly, and Jan, to whom I'll pass the floor now for a quick word of intro and welcome. Hi, all. Hi. Hello. I'm Juan, a faculty member in sculpture. And I'm Kelly Jazvac, also a faculty member in sculpture at Concordia. And I'm Jan Poco. I'm a guest artist, guest teacher for mm -hmm. class. Yeah, I'm based in UCAM normally. Good. Okay. Yeah, that's great. Should we get started with, uh, <laughs> I'm not sure what's do you want to tell us about what we'll be doing and get started with uh, a little intro to the course and the tour? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, students in the class from four different universities have been divided into four teams and they're each in the process of developing a public artwork to be displayed on site in Griffintown as part of the, uh, the REM, it's 1% art pro uh, program. Uh, so today is kind of a brainstorming session. We'll go around to each table, ask the students where they're at in their research, and uh, have a conversation. They're going to be talking to us about the site where they're going to be installing sculptures late in July. Um, so they're going to talk a little bit about what is it that they're interested in in the site, what materials they're interested in, um, and then just kind of overall their project at the moment. Wonderful. Should we make our way over to the first table? <laughs> Yeah, that sounds yeah, great. Yeah. Hi. 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh, so we have take the mic. Yeah, well, I present myself now. Yeah. Okay. yeah, we're gonna begin with the presentation. Okay. So I think they're ready for us. So if you wanna okay. so introduce I'm yourselves. Isabelle Languita. I uh, study in Concordia. And uh, in studio art, sculpture, I like to use uh, fiber, clay, garbage, anything in my sculpture. Hi, mon nom c'est Laurie. Uh, I'm a student at University of Montreal on design d'intérieur. Bonjour, um, je m'appelle Sarah. I'm from UCAM, but I did my BFA at Concordia in studio arts, but now I'm Precising, focusing my practice in painting. So, but everything interests me. I'm Danika Olders. I am doing my master's in sculpture at Concordia and I like building interactive installations. Amazing. I don't get the microphone, I have my own. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about your project, where it is at the moment? Uh, what kinds of ideas kind yeah, of surface? Right. Yeah. We've prepared a little statement. <laughs> you good enough. <laughs> Our group name is Les Mauvais Herbes, or weeds, but I like the French better. Um, we are interested in that which resists control. Like a weed breaking through the cracks, we are searching to uncover what has always been there, the people, the stories, and the changes they went through. This is an area with a layered history, each change being imposed on top of what came before, attempting to erase it. It is also an intersect intersection, a place of movement and of stillness, a crossroads of history, transportation, and people. We want to create something to reflect on the history, on the weeds that come through, a temporary shelter, a place to stop and spend time with and within, a space that contrasts the architecture built up around and is interactive with the people passing by. Great. Thank you. 
right? Well, thanks. <laughs> 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 and maybe walk us through some of the materials that you collected and um, and some of what, these beautiful drawings as yeah. well wow yeah i think there's nine options yeah on the table already. <laughs> <laughs> a lot a lot of options we have not selected anything yet but um so materials um i can start with the the with the, this mm. which is uh, maybe because there is vines there is plants mauvais herbe yeah. uh, on the site there is a uh, vines that we might use it's it's not this the vine from the site but it's just something uh, as an example um and so other materials like we we might we thought about using this kind of plastic to create a fabric and you can interrupt me anytime and at one point we thought about making a kite because we want to to play with the the height also because you know the ram is passing quite high mm. and in one direction they don't really see at the bottom so mm. we thought about playing with that height and activated by a, a bicycle or some mechanism that we still have to uh, think clearly through how um and oh yeah and clay of course because we wanted to play with the idea of how to build different types of walls and using clay as a very sustainable material so there is some uh, experiments here we're also interested in maybe using some recycled steel and wood or if it's new wood using it in a way that it can be taken apart and reused um and then because the area is near like what do you call it the with the boats the <laughs> yeah the, <laughs> <laughs> the water the water <laughs> um possibly using some things like recycled rope or if we can get our hands on some old uh sails for boats to create some of the fabric components and i know it seems like a lot of materials but what interests us is that griffintown is like very clean and everything is similar so we want to explore the idea of like having multiple or a, a variety of texture, so a, bit, a variety of material. And we found this 1% um, art piece, which actually assembles a variety of, um, of different architecture that used to be there and is there now. And we thought it would maybe interesting to inspire us. And another material we didn't talk about is maybe using old keyboards that yeah. don't work anymore and that could maybe um, fashion some sort of panel or wall, just like Nicola Bayer did. Mm. So, yeah. And I just saw a cherry blossom in one of the drawings. Yeah. Do you want to talk about that? <laughs> yeah, that caught my eye too. <laughs> I can talk about that. So, uh, when looking at the history of Griffintown, we um, found out that there used to be a chocolate factory in Montreal in the, um, since the, at the beginning of the 20th, 20th century. And it was there until the 60s. And it was a cherry blossom uh, factory. And um, yeah, there was a lot of small um, stories about this place. And one of them we found very cute was that um, children used to wait at one specific door uh, for bad batches of chocolate that were <laughs> given to them. So we, we thought maybe it was some, uh, a beautiful form to work with, uh, yeah, maybe. to give back. Yeah. Maybe we talked about maybe using uh, vending machines, free vending, free vending machines, <laughs> recycle one, and mm -hmm. maybe there would be something with that inside the vending machine. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> so I'm guessing that you're interested in something kind of interactive in one way or another, something that people can like, you know, use or like activate, right? Is that like a common? Well, either interactive or that would change over time. So maybe it's something that is not static, that it would start a certain way and then there would be like multiple outcomes possible. Um, we just talked about this idea of like, um, maybe building a like a, a mini skyscraper and then putting soil on top of it huh? uh, and then maybe it would like with the weeks passing by with the wind with the water it would maybe uh, uncover as time passes um and the outcome could be like more positive if the soil stays on top and we don't see the the building or if it it, it, if at the end all the soil is gone, it's going to represent like what happened with the neighborhood, um, with the buildings that got up very fast. So that's one of the ideas. We also um, 
like the idea of the uh, clothesline um, because for us it's a big symbol of community so mm -hmm. we are looking into some ideas that it would be like a moving structure um, we don't know really what we want to hang yet um, and we also have this concept of shelter that maybe we want to keep um, yeah that's that's in all drawings as well no somewhere that you can hide or pass through or Home. The idea of home that needs to be revisited when we look at the at the area, we think. So yeah, that's of the different drawings that we that we did, that some that looked more like uh, the village of the Hobbit. <laughs> yeah, Very cute. <laughs> yeah, well, that would take uh, at least a year or two yeah. to build, but. Uh, <laughs> Just to bounce back on the idea of home, maybe it could also also just be a place to take your time, lay lay down a bit under under because yeah. you said it's a crossroads. It's very dynamic. It's very loud. The rem and the mm -hmm. the water, the people biking, the construction. So that's why we were like really um, interested by the idea of a, a house yeah. or a shelter, something with a roof. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, well, I was thinking that the clothesline, I mean, just the kind of like it came up to my head pretty quickly, but like the clothesline could be beautiful with the boats, just thinking about sailing boats and kind of like the reference between the fabric blowing in the wind. And... We had, had the idea of building a fabric with those plastic that don't recycle, you know, cutting like a scales. Yeah, scales. Mm -hmm. And something that could uh, react within yeah. the wind. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that would be cool. Like an enormous scale. Yeah. Out of plastic. Mm. I like the way you could in invent something, like invent a material, just like mm. you said with keyboards or with those plastics or even like a mixture of all of them, just yeah. like in uh, Cardinals mm -hmm. sculptures. I think maybe the next step would be to make some maquettes and try to manipulate thing and put together and well, yeah. because we have a lot of different ideas and we can realize them all <laughs> no but i mean it's fun because some of them are there from the from day one yes. i remember that like that plastic thing i think you yeah. talked to me about that like on day one yeah. the shelter kind of thing the cherry blossom is new <laughs> <laughs> the earth, the, yeah the earth. um I really like the idea of a shelter, a place where you can get shadow, which is like pretty rare in that space. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's a good also. Like and a, I think that the challenge would be at that point how to um, like investigate how to make people to stop. You know, how do how do you how do you draw people into it and actually get them to like cord. You know, go in? Like, <laughs> yeah. you know, what is it about like you can draw somebody into it to actually like? Mm -hmm. I Did, think. Didn't you talk about the idea to have like one of those benches in to use the the actual benches there to to be covered with something or we were thinking more of making our own bench maybe okay. inside or like some of them having like hooks for you to lock your bike so you can actually yeah. stop and not worry about your bike. <laughs> okay. We want if we want to make people stop in a place where they usually wouldn't we really need to think because otherwise we're just going to make like something that won't be used as we intended to so we mm -hmm. need to think is it like realistic to do in that space since it's such a like a crossroad mm -hmm. we want like people passing by also to be able to enjoy it mm -hmm. yeah. differently mm -hmm. Since one of the main audience is like bikers going around we talked about you using um, of the frame of a bike or even a bike to do something else like you said it has to be uh, functional and it has to be easy to use so that people don't like i mean we don't care how to use it it's just uh, it's there for them but we had some ideas how of how to use a bike to move the sculpture Hmm. So maybe there, we don't know how yet, but maybe there, <laughs> maybe there could be a piston um, attached to the bike, and it would move the roof. Actually, like open it in some ways, or 
Yeah. Like this would be like a, a parachute material. Exactly. Like okay. It would move mm. with the wind, but also it would go up with like a big bar of some sort. Mm. And if you succeed, you get a chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> a cherry blossom chocolate. <laughs> And maybe another idea with the reparation of the space with putting some nature into it, which we, we talked a little bit about that, but I thought about uh, using the bike to activate a mechanism again that would open some um, reservoir water reservoir to water plants that would be that would be there so the people would uh, arrose uh, les plantes <laughs> in a way but those are all ideas that we need to uh, but we need to think about and somehow i think they all linked like that piece with the clothesline could be like linked with one of those shelter pieces mm -hmm. and there mm -hmm. could be like something very very coherent about like mixing those two ideas mm -hmm. i think um, the home related as well. They're like pause related is something mm -hmm. that could work and wind related. And I really like this material. You were talking about the bikers. There's something, there's something I miss in Montreal when I bike is like shelter when it rains as well. Yes. And that there's something with the sound of this already yes. with the water, with like it could be shadow, it could be like protection. And there is a crypt yeah. very nearby that with the leaves, it does yeah. a bit of the sound too. Mm. Which yeah. Would be, yeah. Like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you have some at home, don't throw them away. Okay. <laughs> this will be the moment to outsource, right? Now. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so please don't need that. <laughs> they are not recycled. <laughs> Great. No, you've do, you've been doing like very good. Thank you so much. Yay. Thank you. <laughs> Hello. Hello. I don't know where to sit. Yeah. Cool. I'm there. I'm sitting. <laughs> so hi, um, my name is Olivier, and uh, I'm studying in uh, urban planning at Concordia. And uh, I'll pass it on to. The... Salut, moi c'est Julia, et uh, j'étudie en design d'événements à l'UCAM. Allô, moi c'est Clotilde, je suis étudiante à la maîtrise en photographie à Concordia. Bonjour, moi c'est Julie, je suis étudiante en sculpture à Concordia. Tell us about your project. Where are you thinking right now? D'accord. <laughs> <laughs> Euh, donc, pour notre part, on est encore en phase euh, d'idéation. Mm -hmm. Donc, on essaie d'explorer le plus possible, d'élargir. Euh, on a fait beaucoup de recherches sur le quartier. Euh, et là, pour le moment, on s'intéresse beaucoup plus aux euh, vibrations que dans le quartier, autant euh, positives que négatives. Euh, pour ce qui est des matériaux, on ne les a pas encore totalement décidés. On regarde euh, c'est quoi nos possibilités. Oui, puis dans le fond, l'idée commençait au départ avec euh, les vibrations du REM puis du train qui passe là. Fait on, on pensait à l'espace comme un, un lieu qui, qui crée des vibrations, mais finalement, on s'est aperçu que c'était beaucoup plus le son qui était, qui était présent. Mais on est resté avec l'idée que, dans le fond, euh, le, le, ben le, le site, c'est un site qui est quand même transitoire, mais il y avait quand même... Euh, des vibrations qui, quand on est sur le site, on sent euh, l'environnement, puis on sent les oiseaux, le, le mouvement de, de la lumière, l'eau le, du canal. Enfin, on s'est vraiment comme inspiré un petit peu du site pour euh, récolter des, des sensations. Puis, je pense que la vibration est restée. Puis, on pensait aussi au mouvement et au motif dans le fond de la vibration. Puis, comment on pouvait récupérer cette, euh, ce motif-là, puis le, aller chercher un peu. Euh, euh, les éléments qui sont aussi euh, vibratoires ou dans la population ou même dans, dans l'arrondissement pour euh, l'intégrer à notre projet. Euh, en fait, on était aussi, euh, on avait, on a discuté sur euh, 
l'histoire qu'il y a avec la vibration aussi. On avait parlé avec Anne plus tôt euh, de l'histoire euh, de la vibration du quartier par euh, sa, son, sa particularité d'un euh, quartier ouvrier. Donc, euh, les ouvriers vont travailler souvent avec de la machinerie. Qui va faire de la vibration? Il va y avoir euh, des conditions physiques qui vont se développer suite euh, au, à l'utilisation d'outils. Euh, dans la, transformation, dans la transformation du quartier aussi, il y a euh, toute la construction des condos où on a une certaine vibration au niveau de la machinerie. Euh, on, a une, on a de la vibration par le mouvement transitoire, euh, soit de l'équipement de construction ou des véhicules. Euh, puis on avait, euh, on a aussi, bon, il y a plusieurs, on a regardé comme les entreprises qu'il y a dans le quartier. On a des, il y a des entreprises, ben, je ne sais pas si on peut les nommer, mais euh, il y a l'Arsenal, il y a MR63, puis euh, il y a les brasseries, il y a euh, Ouvry. Euh, puis il y a aussi le cœur des citoyens, en fait. Donc, chaque citoyen vibre à l'intérieur d'un secteur qui vibre lui aussi de différentes façons et euh, dans le temps. And also, with, with us, we have a few of materials we've thought of. So we have like some, some wood, we have some seeds, we have other materials, and we also have uh, immaterials. So like we've thought about vibrations and we've also thought about sounds. And uh, with sounds, we we've took like uh, soundscapes and sound recordings of like birds uh, and things like that. So we could give the voice to the birds also. <laughs> Are there other materials that you've come across um, that relate to vibration in one way or another? Like I'm thinking about like shock absorbing kind of like. You know, materials like foams or like sound insulation foams or like, I don't know, like, are there things that like material wise relate to vibrations? And We, okay. We've thought a lot about how to uh, materialize this often immaterial uh, notion of vibrations. Okay. <rire> euh, <rire> sinon, il y a un matériau qu'on a, qu a pensé, en fait, il y a, il y a une grande histoire des brasseries dans le quartier et il y en a encore beaucoup en ce moment. Donc, on, on se disait qu'on pouvait peut-être réutiliser la, la drèche de bière, qui est comme la céréale qui reste après qu'il y a brassé la bière. Et euh, il y a quelques compagnies qui commencent déjà à l'utiliser pour faire euh, du mobilier. Est-ce qu'on pourrait euh, en faire euh, des briques euh, avec euh, de la colle écologique ou quelque chose du genre euh, mm -hmm pour utiliser cette matière qui est vraiment à côté et à proximité qu'on aurait à portée de main. Oh, interesting. Oui. Do you still have like in mind to use photography? There was that that idea at one point? Euh, yeah, oui, pour euh, dans le fond, c'est ça avec des petites canisses comme ça, ouais. on avait pensé euh, les remplir avec du papier photosensible. Puis là, dans le fond, il me reste à faire la recherche pour... Ben en fait, c'est juste simplement de faire un trou euh, qui est vraiment minuscule. Ça <rire> fait que ce n'est pas de la grosse recherche. Mais... Puis on avait comme inspiration, dans le fond, euh, Jeannie euh, Julien Fort. Puis on pensait installer les petites canisses sur, des, sur le site afin de voir euh, si la structure, par exemple, du train va bouger. Puis euh, permettre que le... Le, la structure devienne comme un trépied puis qui va prendre le, le mécanisme comme de création de, de lumière et de mouvement. Ouais. Fait on pensait d'en distribuer autour euh, à différents endroits qui ne sont pas trop dangereux, puis finalement. Non, mais j'aime l'actuel actual like recording of vibration through like photography, but also that new material, la drèche de, de bière. Mm -hmm. Je trouve ça super comme idée. Puis là, je vois avec les images qui sont dans votre livre aussi. Il y a peut-être façon aussi de marquer ça comme en, en volume euh, ondulatoire. Là. Mm -hmm. Non, je pense que c'est super bien, euh, bien commencé. Puis cette idée-là aussi, transhistorique, peut-être la vibration sur le corps des gens, on en avait parlé aussi mm -hmm. jusqu'à aujourd'hui, de l'avoir par, par dépit, mais ensuite par choix, c'est-à-dire d'habiter là puis de vivre dans une, un coin de mouvement. Là. Je trouve qu'il y a vraiment quelque chose d'intelligent sur l'espace-temps le, qui est occupé par, euh, par cette espèce de mouvement-là. Mm -hmm. Qu'est-ce qu'il fasse avec ça? Ça, c'est intéressant, visuellement. Wow, wow. C'est quoi ça? C'est un, un, un examen cardiaque. Okay. Euh, ah. Donc, on a différents types de vibrations. Euh, puis, la vibration, en fait, euh, les dernières idées on, dont on parlait ce matin, c'est vraiment euh, de prendre, d'enregistrer de, différents types de vibrations. Donc, mm. euh, peut-être celle du train, 
euh, peut-être celle des passants, des oiseaux, la faune, la flore, puis de, de tracer des lignes qui vont s'entrecroiser et se superposer. Donc, toutes ces vibrations-là vont devenir, on, on cherche encore la manière de le matérialiser, mais euh, toutes ces, vibra toutes ces vibrations-là seraient euh, en harmonie et euh, en, en lien les unes avec les autres. Could they be like the, the site's heart, heartbeat? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, no. yes, that's, that's good. what we're thinking. Yeah. I also quite like that subject map that you have there, that kind of research this month here. Mm -hmm. And I'm just thinking of the ways that you can expand it to be, um, you know, like one branch can link to a material, another branch mm -hmm. can link to an artwork, and then just kind of like expand it in a way that helps you put translating the abstract idea into an actual thing, you know, into a form. And maybe. Is there anything about that that you can talk to us about? Because I feel like, I mean, there's kind of like all kinds of interesting research that came up there. Am I on now? Yeah. 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 OK, finally, found the button. <laughs> you hurt me. <laughs> Euh, dans le fond, en fait, euh, c'est une mind map avec toutes les, les recherches qu'on a faites autour euh, de la vibration. Et euh, autant de le, de, par rapport à l'oscillation, à la musique, euh, qu'au battement de cœur. Mm. Euh, en fait, un, un truc qui est, qui est intéressant, en fait, euh, si je rebondis aussi sur ce que tu as dit, euh, quand on est retourné sur le terrain après avoir euh, choisi le thème de la vibration, puis on s'est rendu compte que on, on ressentait la vibration, mais que ça ne vibre pas vraiment. En fait, on a fait des tests avec euh, des, des sauts d'eau pour voir si on pouvait voir l'ondulation, puis on ne la, la voit pas, elle n'est pas perceptible de cette façon-là. Donc, il va falloir trouver une autre façon aussi euh, de capter euh, cette vibration-là, dont euh, les, les recherches sur euh, c'est quoi les unités euh, de, de fréquence, de vibration, et ainsi mm. de suite. Parce que j'ai remarqué la musique composante, et ça m'a fait penser à des expérimentaux de composition, et ça m'a fait même penser à que tous ces sons qui se passent sur ce site sont comme une like, a composition of the site acoustically so just ways that maybe yeah that you can expand that into being like yeah considered in sound and composition and mm -hmm. right uh, julie elle avait pensé à ça là <laughs> il y avait eu l'idée de de d'enregistrer des, des vibrations pour que les, les utilisateurs puissent uh, le, le mettre sur leur téléphone puis le mettre ensuite dessus sur leur poitrine pour mm -hmm. vraiment comme le, le ressentir proche d'eux mm -hmm. And even the sound waves then become like a visual thing, right? That can mm -hmm. ultimately become the design of like a bench or like design of a sculpture. And that's mm -hmm. kind of like the sound of the site made tangible that you can sit on or something, mm -hmm. you can I feel take like shelter you, under. Or you can see that a bit in these beautiful drawings, that idea of like uh, you know, dropping something in the water and the ripples that it makes. And then you kind of freeze that in time in a recording. Avec la trache de bière. <laughs> no, but I really like that idea to materialize those ideas of, of vibration through like a new material as well. Mm -hmm. That that's like historically historically linked with the area. Mm -hmm. I think and it's really important. Hyper local one in terms of sustainability, yeah. like yeah. getting your material right there is right. Really, really smart. Bravo, l'équipe. Mm -hmm. Really well done. Yeah. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> uh, what is this? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Well, wow, bravo. Yeah. Oh. Bravo. <laughs> Ta -da -da -da. We're just going to wait. The camera's going to go on the left. We're trying to figure out. Huh? Oh. That's the same song. <laughs> so we'll, we'll begin with introductions as usual, so if you want to get us started. Uh, do I have to look at the camera? Um, you can look at me or the camera or <laughs> anybody outside. Um, <laughs> my name is Lucy and I study at Concordia in the Fine Arts Department uh, with a major in Sculpture. Je m'appelle Maxime et je viens de l'Université de Montréal où j'ai terminé ma maîtrise en design. Uh, my name is Astrid. I'm a student at Concordia in design. My name is Victorian. I'm a master's student in design at the uh, University of Montreal. Uh, hi, 
I'm Sophie, I study uh, architecture at McGill. Um, okay, so our project is um, kind of going in this direction of focusing on direction. Um, we were <laughs> we were really interested in this kind of like cross section of the site. Um, it's kind of a, an end ending point and a passing through point of um, a ton of different uh, means of transportation. Um, it's a bike path, a pedestrian path. The two trains go right by. Um, and we've been researching the history of the site and um, it's kind of been like that forever. Mm -hmm. So um, also considering all of us are coming from different places, different backgrounds, we thought that it would be um, kind of a good starting point to each um, bring a value to the table and um, use that as a way of like kind of joining all of our directions in the same kind of way that the site does. So personal value that you're then using to orient yourself. Exactly, okay. yeah. So um, those main values are um, of like what we want the project to include mm -hmm. um, are some sort of like critique of um, whatever we end up talking about, <laughs> <laughs> um, but just making sure that it's like incorporating critical thinking, mm -hmm. um, something that uh, uses interaction or experience um, something that really focuses on the material relationship and how that applies to the final concept. Um, and then sensory awareness. So, um, yeah, like this kind of like sensorial experience. Um, yeah, so then I'm going to pass it off to Sophie. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah, I'll get to talk about the concept. So kind of got in incorporated uh, at the end. But um, we did this big brainstorm in which we talked about direction and what it meant to us. And um, this idea of like kind of like all these vectors tra uh, traversing the site and how our object could be a point that kind of um, would redirect. Uh, and so also like on top of that, you got all these other vectors of the, the wind, the sun, and then we got really interested with the idea of the sun and the shadow mm -hmm. and pointing to things using our object. Um, and so we got this idea of kind of like the anti-clock. So you, could, you would get this object that would project a shadow that would uh, basically redirect your, your gaze onto different objects of the site that maybe either are not there or that are uh, of the past or you know that are elements of the nature for example mm -hmm. um and so an object that kind of doesn't want to be looked at but instead kind of invites you to look elsewhere mm -hmm. um and yeah we would love to have it in three languages and so you would get these like scheduled hours that are written on it so for example 13 and then it would say for example bees uh, or abeille, or, and then we'd love to have it uh, translated as well in um, a uh, indigenous language. Um, and yeah, basically using the framework of time, which is so kind of strict, uh, and have it be more kind of flowing and uh, reveal things of the environment. Uh, and yeah. <laughs> Questions? <laughs> <laughs> You're kind of like skipped, mesmerized yeah. by. You skipped yeah. your question asking. Okay. So it's a sundial, yes. and then cues on the sundial. Will, in addition to where the shadow is pointing, there'll be word cues to tell us what to look at when we when our attention goes there. Mm -hmm. That's really lovely. And mm -hmm. what what are you making the sundial out of? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, we have not decided yet what we're going to make it out of, but I think. Um, like my value that I brought to the table was the material attention, which is just like really making sure that whatever we make this object out of, that it is reflective of the space, um, either like through materials that are there presently or like reflecting um, historical forms that used to be there through like our site research and stuff. Um, it could be like, like we really haven't narrowed it down because we have lots of ideas, but it's just been a week. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> it's just been a week. Um, so, 
I don't know, potentially using dirt to create some sort of like mud brick or like cob. Um, we've thought about using foliage from the site to create some sort of like, I don't know, like there's this interesting thing in this book about um, creating fibers out of like legumes and like different plant matters. So mm -hmm. we're still like early in the um, research phase of that, but I think whatever it is, we want it to definitely like have a physical relationship to the space in that way. Um, that just like further grounds our concept to like a local environment. Um, yeah, I think that's. Yeah, so I feel like we have um, this kind of starting point that can lead us to um, like what we want to highlight. And right now, I think since this, there's so many, there's so much interaction in this space and so much moving through it constantly and, and in the surrounding area as well. Um, there's tons of like concepts that we can work with. So right now we're um, kind of trying to figure out exactly what those will be mm -hmm. um, and how we can relate them to the material. An example of this would be um, highlighting the industry or highlighting um, how this space historically has been quite a social space. I found out today that um, in the 50s or 40s, it was a playground area. It's always been kind of this meeting square. So um, yeah, right now we're just uh, trying to, to, to make those connections between material and um, value and, and concept. So. Well, yeah, that idea as well to use like or reuse like bridges parts. Don't you want to talk about that? It's so interesting. Yeah, we found we found out yesterday that there was a competition about uh, the reuse of the metal of the Champlain, Champlain Bridge, bridge. Mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, we're we're now in uh, communication with the 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 the, the, the organization uh, to find out if it's possible to reuse the metal from the bridge yes. to repurpose it into our sculptures. So, yeah. mm -hmm. Fantastic. Yeah, and there's like that very intelligent link with, well, the bridge that's next to the site, but also like the canal and the presence of transportation. And I really like the idea that, of course, it points out like different objects or things to see on site, but also like it could be like we discussed that yesterday, like social issues or uh, historical aspects or I don't know. I really like it because it really goes like over the limits of our site as mm -hmm. well. Yeah, I think that's like one of the main cruxes of our project is that we want to really like highlight the things that people don't see or mm -hmm. like don't think to look at and using like a really simple gesture of like pointing people in that direction yep. through something that is like the sun and um, a mode of communication such as time that like we all recognize. Mm -hmm. um, and so yeah, we're just trying to like figure out how to like formally link the i mean like link the form in a way that like people read it how we want to like they read it as like time or pointing somewhere or like that so those are kind of like still things that we're considering and i remember maxim telling us about like it's also linked to la tour d'aiguillage which is also like right. a question of needles or aiguille and en fait c'est l'aspect yeah. poétique du projet c'est de montrer aussi des choses invisibles du site ce que ce qu'expliquait Lucie donc d'avoir une dimension euh, en fin de compte qui est euh, multiple euh, celle du site celle de de jouer avec le nom même de la tour avec la notion d'aiguillage l'ombre avec le matériel et l'immatériel en fait c'est ça qui est intéressant à travers ce projet mm -hmm. Congrats. Yeah, Doing great. Really <laughs> hey. great. Hello. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> Hello. 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 <laughs> Are we going to go around and say hi? Yes. Yeah, we're going to yeah. do that. All right, I can move too. <laughs> Where am I? <laughs> Help, where am I? You'll be back. I'll be back? Oh my yeah. gosh. <laughs> You'll be there soon. <laughs> I've, <Back here. laughs> don't have to live stream back here. I've like become liminal. Oh no, here I am. <laughs> Hello. 
My name is Patrizio McClelland, and uh, I have just finished my undergrad in design at Concordia, and will be starting my MFA in design uh, in the fall. Hello, I'm Alexandra. I study at Concordia, and I'm majoring in sculpture right now. <laughs> Hi, my name is Liliana, and I am a glass artist and a jeweler, and I'm currently doing my undergrad in sculpture at the moment at Concordia. Bonjour, je m'appelle Josée Brouillard, je suis étudiante à la maîtrise à l'UQAM. Hello, uh, je m'appelle Fiza et uh, je suis étudiante à la maîtrise uh, en art visuel et médiatique à l'UQAM et je me spécialise en art sonore. Well, well, well. <laughs> <laughs> Um, can you talk to us a little bit about that? Because that seems. Oh, yeah. We're, we're going to get there. Can we get a close up on that maquette? It's been rehearsed. Okay. Yeah, there you go. I get it. Beautiful. Uh, you're going to see that building a million times on this table, and we're going to talk about it a million times. Um, I think I want to start out with putting two quotes that we found in our research uh, in conversation with one each. Uh, one another. The first is from 2013, and it was after the city purchased this building, which is the Tour d'Aguillage, uh, Wellington. On transformera la tour en incubateur culturel consacré au thème de l'urbanité. And two years later, after the announcement of the REM infrastructure, uh, s'il vous plaît, procédez immédiatement à l'arrêt du projet Tour d'Aguillage, Wellington. So. <laughs> We took these quotes as a kind of catalyst and we started really thinking about this, the, this building. And it occurred to us that this kind of process was indicative maybe of a kind of urban failure. Uh, and we became kind of obsessed with this word failure. You know, especially when I think we all have our own personal connection to the site and have having had watched it change over time. I think our challenge so far has been finding a way to be critical about sociocultural access to the space without being angry, you know? Um, you can't overlook the tension of that space, especially as it changes, is defined and redefined again, you know, as it relates to the Tour d'Aguillage, which becomes like a kind of wayfinding around the canal, which was in 2013 slated to become, like I said, an incubator culturel for the community. A plan which unfortunately was indefinitely postponed by the construction of the REM. So we need to acknowledge this rapid and gentrification driven change which surrounds this building and its situ. We've decided to focus on creating um, maybe a new and shared community of connection to the form and the volume of the building, recognizing and broad broadcasting the what we perceive to be the immense sociocultural sustainable potential contained within it as a cultural artifact. I'm going to hand this off to Fiza, who's going to talk a little bit more about that. Donc, on a été rapidement séduit, obsédé par, euh, été obsédé par le bâtiment, particulièrement dans mon cas par le toit. Euh, et euh, bon, on avait plusieurs pistes de comment aborder ce projet-là. Puis, euh, finalement, est venue l'idée de, 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 du changement d'échelle, de, de rapporter, en fait, la, la toiture au sol. Euh, donc, on va euh, reproduire la toiture du, de la tour de l'aiguillage à l'échelle au sol, qui va aussi nous permettre de... Euh, je n'irai pas trop dans les détails, on va y venir par la suite, mais euh, qui, va, ben, qui est un peu une façon d'acquérir le bâtiment euh, parce qu'on n'a pas vraiment accès à, à, à ben, s'attaquer au bâtiment, si on peut dire ainsi. On n'a pas vraiment l'opportunité, euh, je pense, euh, jusqu'à maintenant, de, de pouvoir euh, soit s'appuyer sur le bâtiment ou de, de construire même euh, sur le bâtiment, évidemment. Euh, donc, en, en, en reconstruisant euh, l'espace au sol, ben on, ainsi on, on se donne tous les droits. <rire> euh, on se donne tous les droits euh, d'y effectuer les différentes interventions. Euh, je vais laisser euh, José nous parler euh, de l'intervention principale en fait. Euh, donc, une des interventions qu'on va faire, c'est euh, on veut faire un commentaire à ce projet d'incubateur culturel qui est en attente, qui était 
pendant un certain temps, on pensait euh, abandonner, mais qui semble être en attente. Donc, euh, il y a plusieurs mots qui nous sont venus en tête là, pour poser ce commentaire. Au début, c'était « fail » parce qu'on pensait que c'était abandonné, mais après, on s'est rendu compte que, soi-disant, le projet est toujours euh, sur la table. Donc, en fait, le terme euh, qui nous est venu en tête, c'est euh, « standby ». Et puis, euh, pour avoir travaillé avec euh, des affichages commerciaux euh, que je reproduisais plus euh, en petit format en galerie, euh, j'avais envie de m'inspirer encore une fois de, de ces enseignes-là qu'on voit là, qui sont utilisées euh, pour annoncer des magasins ou euh, des compagnies. Et puis, euh, j'aime beaucoup l'écriture euh, en affichage à sept segments qui rappelle là, le, les appareils électroniques, mais qui rappelle aussi... Mmh. Euh, les cadrans euh, qui nous réveillent euh, le matin. Donc, en fait, le temps qui passe, ça fait une référence au temps qui passe. Donc, « stand-by » qui est en fait un temps suspendu, mais euh, le temps continue, continue de, de, de tourner. Donc, euh, on avait, je ne sais pas si la caméra peut aller si proche que ça, c'est notre petite maquette, <rire> mais euh, on avait l'idée justement d'amener le toit euh, au sol pour y donner accès, mais de mettre... Euh, une enseigne euh, avec le mot « stand-by » pour faire notre commentaire, en fait, sur cette bâtisse-là. Mm -hmm. euh, je pense qu'il y avait beaucoup de gens là, qui avaient des choses à dire sur cette bâtisse et Lily va nous dire euh, ce qu'elle a trouvé dans ses recherches. Merci. Um, alors, uh, I've actually, I went to the site and I interviewed uh, the community, we can call, um, very informally, you know, it's not like a, a legit uh, study research, but Um, I wanted to understand what is the feeling of the community and the space, um, especially since I have no information about this project at all. Um, and so I found that uh, many people were saying that this building that we're focusing on is invisible. Um, C'est une coquille invisible. Um, I never really see it, to quote someone. Um, someone else said, you know, I never noticed the building. And I think that's something that's very powerful and, and important um, because it's, it is a monument of sorts, this building. It's historical, it's patrimonial, it can't be taken down, but it's not even being maintained, you know, it's crumbling. Um, and when you go to the site, you see the bricks are falling, the paint is falling, it's completely uh, getting destroyed. Um, and yeah, so people were saying it, it's just, um, It's a lack of architectural potential and so much can be done with it. It was going to become something and then that stopped. And we're currently, uh, thanks to Alexandra, like we're, we're doing, we're trying to reach out to people who might have any information about what's happening with this building and when it's going to have something happen to it again. Um, because this, the project of the incubator is on pause, but is it going to continue? We don't know for sure. Um, we hope so. So this commentary on like a failure is very interesting. Because um, we don't really know if it's a failure in the end, mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's a big question. And um, in connection with like this feeling of community, um, Alexandra has uh, a lot to say about that. <laughs> so one of the aspect is, aspects that we want to incorporate in our um, bringing the, the roof down to the ground and uh, making it accessible to the public is also to bring a certain sort of garden inside of it. And uh, upon inspecting the space with uh, my family, uh, we discovered that there is many plants uh, that are deemed as uh, weeds right now uh, um, growing uh, nearby. And uh, these are like non-conventional edible plants and they also have lots of medicinal uh, importance to them. So we want to bring back these plants into the community garden so people can uh, use them and um, at, at, during the vernissage, we're going to also be collecting and making tea and uh, teaching people about uh, how they can use these plants that are in their community and uh, how can uh, it be beneficial for them, for their health. And isn't it also like a resting area or like a discussion area, like a standby area? Exactly, yeah. yeah. Kind okay. of like a focus point. Thank you yeah. for feeding us that one. That was good. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's just like, because I'm looking at the, um, at the drawings, but uh, mm -hmm. I think it's, I think it's really intelligent from you guys to have like let go the use of the building but using the whole idea of the building mm -hmm. i think to use that parameter of the impossible <laughs> come approach of the building yeah. i think that's the best way to approach it that's really uh, pretty good thank you mm -hmm. these drawings are really beautiful too how yep. they like the, yeah just to get a sense of the roof 
what's up in the air coming down to the floor and that what can grow there and the potential for signage. <laughs> <laughs> you got it, you got it. <laughs> so you have to choose which, which side you're It's open to interpretation. <laughs> and do you know what kind of materials you want to use? And... I don't think we've come that far. I mean, that's a, there's a lot. I mean, I think maybe one challenge is, do we go in the direction of like full mimicry? Yep. Or do we suggest through form? Um, well, I think we def. Do you want to? Désolé. Ben en fait, l'idée euh, pourrait être intéressante de trouver des matériaux récupérés. Euh, Il y a quand même des plusieurs euh, fournisseurs de, de matériaux recyclés maintenant de construction là où c'est possible de trouver. Euh, des, des matériaux, euh, on peut aussi euh, aller à la cueillette euh, au porto du site. <rire> c'est pas les matériaux euh, à un moment donné qui manquent. Il euh, y, y a eu énormément de construction rapide dans les dernières années, là, fait que c'est euh, assez facilement envisageable de, de ramasser ce qui traîne, de faire le ménage un peu. Il y a aussi, euh, ben, comme on a l'intention de, de faire des plantations euh, sur le toit, euh, le nouveau toit. Euh, on va pouvoir bénéficier de, du drainage de la fontaine qui est prévu à proximité aussi. Donc, euh, donc. Have, have you decided on scale? Because this seems like an interesting, like lots of potential for that as it relates to architecture mm -hmm. and deciding, you know, how much you scale it down and what relationship. Okay, one three. Why one three? <laughs> pour le moment. Originally, well. Originally, it was going to be one to one, but I think we quickly decided that that would, uh, you know, not leave room for anyone else's projects. <laughs> so. <laughs> the the phrase standby, I find a really poetic choice because it, I mean, it, it means waiting, as we all know, or on standby, um, but it also means support, like to stand by someone. Mm. Um, mm. It's like a, a really beautiful gesture of care. And so there's these two things are getting folded into one another, a sense of failure or like, is it coming yet? But then also like, no, what's the time it takes to care for something and support something? And as it relates to the plants, then yeah. I feel like that folds in quite nicely with yeah. the tea and providing that to the community and standing by the community kind of like, I like that part of it. It also um, has to do a bit with um, my main concern for this team is how do we become marketable and how do we create a piece <laughs> that is beautiful and has meaning of course Jan um but it's really important to me that the piece is beautiful yep. um and the phrase stand by I in the like electronic letters I think is going to be really interesting and very instagrammable um <laughs> which is important you know we want uh, we would like people to see this piece and to be interested by it and to take pictures and like hashtag send by, you know, uh, it would be great. And that's something that I'm very interested in uh, progressing with. Oh, uh, and Alexandra has, uh, we had an idea, I don't know if it was mentioned about the tea garden, yeah. Yeah. Um, which I think is so beautiful yeah. about like hosting these events of tea in the garden that we created with these plants um, and healing of the community in a different way because it's completely changed so many times. I think we just have to do one some checking with this with the people that make the rules about the distribution of tea. But we'll get back to that later. <laughs> the tea regulators of Montreal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on it. <laughs> but like using the plantain, like celebrating yeah. this uh, plant that has been deemed a weed by colonial a colonial lens. Like that, that sounds like a really beautiful inversion of like bringing back that beautiful plant as the feature of the garden, mm -hmm. not as the thing you're trying to yeah. eliminate from it. So the plantain right now, right next to the back, uh, bike path, there is a huge garden of it. And uh, in a perfect world, I would like to bring it, take it from there, source it from there. So sourcing locally and bringing it and making it spread a little in, uh, in our plant sheet. There is some other plants that uh, are nearby, like chicory and uh, uh, milk, they so they're all plants that are growing nearby they're deemed as weeds um but the, in, they are in fact very uh helpful for our bodies <laughs> <laughs> and alexandra there's like an afterlife to those plants as well no yes yeah so 
after uh, once we're done with the project we can uh, transform them into teas or even coffee yeah. you can make coffee with uh, uh, some of the roots and uh, then we can depending on the regulations we can <laughs> redistribute yeah. it <laughs> in the fall which is really good yeah. Amazing. It's exciting, yeah. yeah Good job. Thank you. And I think it's good, like the whole thing, like we've been wondering for a week, like would the projects um, respond one to another? And I think it works. Like we've seen like all the tables and there's something very well constructed about what's going to happen on the site. So I mm -hmm. think it's really good. Yeah, as a group of sculptures. Yep. Mm -hmm. And impressive for like less than a week's work too. That wasn't even a full week. <laughs> Bravo. All right. Congratulations to all the teams. Thank you so much for participating Woo! in the walk. Thank you. I know we have a, we have a few audience members here who aren't part of the class. So I'm, I mean, maybe offline, if you want to go explore the projects and talk to any of the team members or ask questions, I guess you're welcome to do that because we're taking a bit of a break now between now and, um, I guess 4, 4 p.m. 4 p.m. is the workshop with Max and uh, Elliot. So we'll put a standby card on Zoom. And those of you in the space, please welcome. You're, you're welcome to mill around and touch everything and talk to people. <laughs> exactly. Stand by. There's our standby card, Max. And yeah, speaking of Max, I'd like to thank Max and Keone and Doug for this amazing work navigating this camera through tight spaces here today. <laughs> All right, folks, so see you in about an hour for the workshop. Thank you.